Fine. So guys, we're turning this in after you finish. Test is in the morning. We should know how to do this stuff. We just had a quiz last week over it. Yeah. All right, so number nine, how do I write my equation? Leanna, where do I start on well, number nine? Just give me like an indicator. Sure. Okay. Um, All right, thank you. Okay, what goes in the first parenthesis? So it'd be x minus 2 and then y plus 3. Very good. Now, how do I know what goes right here? You plug 2 into the x and 1 into the y. Good job. Now, a mistake some of y'all made on your quiz last week, some of y'all did this. So I plug in 2 right here. That's fine. I plug in 1 right here. You type all that in your calculator and you get 16, right? Some of y'all put 16 there, circle this for your answer. That one's not your answer. The answer is the one up here that's got the x and the y in the equation, okay? So that's not your answer. You got me? Not a big deal. I think I probably marked off a couple points on your quiz. A couple points added up. Well, yeah, I shouldn't have to tell you that. Okay. Okay. So we got a circle with the top one? Or just mark the other one out. But don't put the 16 with that because that's not the answer. This one is the answer. The one with the x and the y in the equation. Y'all see my quiz? Sure. I don't think I passed any of them out there. Yeah, I did. All right, I'll show you. The yeah. All right, so on the next one, same thing. You got your center, so that's x minus root 3 squared, y minus 3.5 squared equals. Somebody plug in your origin, which is 0 and 0. Tell me what you get. That's what I got, 15.25. All right, everybody good on 9 and 10. We get those right tomorrow. Maybe. We go as fast as y'all let me go on this. We'll keep going. All right, 11. thought 11 was pretty easy on the quiz. You got endpoints of a circle at over 1, up 1, and over 1, down 3. You don't draw the circle. I'm not going to mark anything off. I just think it helps you. Now, if those are the endpoints of my circle, then my circle is going to look something like that. Agreed? So how are we going to find the center on that circle? Just count in the middle of these two points. Your center's got to be right here. Does that make sense? Right in the middle of those points. So that is over one, down one for your center. All right, so... Harlan, what's my equation going to be? Go ahead and start it for me. X minus one. Keep going. Plus y plus one. Good. Don't forget your squares. Now, Harlan, how do we figure out what number goes on the right side? Square two. Good. You count from here to here. It's two. Two squared is four. That's the left. This is the answer I'm looking for right here. Some people on the quiz the other day wrote the center, drew the circle, and quit. They didn't even write the answer. I'm sure that was none of y'all. but Some people did that, and I had to mark it all wrong. All right, we're good there. All right, 12. You got a new word on 12. What does this word mean again? Tangent. Tangent means the line touches the circle. Right, so... X equals negative 1 is one place that it touches, so draw a line there. X equals 5 is another place, so draw a line there. And the x-axis is the third place it touches. So you've got that. I think we've had this same problem. All right, so now it says that the center of the circle is in the first quadrant. That lets you know my circle's up here. And remember, it's got to touch that side, that side, and that side. Now, find the center of that circle by counting on your paper. All right, so it's six across, or so half of six is three. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's my center right there. Over two, up three. So my equation is going to be x minus two in the first parenthesis, y minus three in the second parenthesis. How do I figure out what it equals? Count your radius. What's my radius? One, two, three. Count the three right there. Square it, you got nine. This is your equation. This is what I need for your answer. And again, if you don't draw the circle, I'm probably not even going to mess with it. I'm not going to mark it off. This is what I'm looking for. I do think it helps you draw the circle. 
Do it on 12. Let's go to 13. All right, we've got the same word again, tangent. So this time our circle touches the y-axis. So I'm going to put a line this time on the y-axis. And it just shows you which one's the y-axis on your paper. All right, it says my center is at over 4 of 3. Okay, well, I can go ahead and start writing my answer down if I know my center. That's x minus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals. Now, how do I know what number goes there? Well, think about it. If your circle has to touch that line, it's going to look something like that. Just count it. 1, 2, 3, 4. What number goes right here? 4 squared is 16. Crop the door. All right, so this first page is all circle stuff. You're going to have to know how to do all that on the test tomorrow. Now the rest of the stuff we've done this week. So I'm going to review 14 and 15, help you graph it. Then I'm going to let y'all do 16 through 19 by yourself. All right, let's go to 14. If I need to slow down, guys, let me know. All right, so Matthew, to graph this one, we start off the same way we've been doing for a week now. Move the plus 11 down and make a box for your group. Yep. Parabolas. Now, remember, we've had some that said y equals, some that said x equals. you got to know which one's which. You should know right now, if it says y equals, then it's going to be going up and down on the y-axis. If it says x equals, it's on the x-axis. That's how you know. All right, so, Matthew, what goes in the box? Yep, so I got a plus 9 here. How about out here? There you go. All right, next step, fill in the parentheses. What's going to go in the parentheses? X, bring down your sign, half of that number, so it's X plus 3. All right, that is my vertex form of the equation. So what's my vertex on this? Yeah, so remember, x plus 3 is in the parentheses. So your x is negative 3, so that lets you know your negative 3 goes in the front, unlike yesterday when the y was in the parentheses. So I got negative 3 up 2. Put a point right there. All right, so now let's think about it i got to pick my numbers to plug in. How do I pick them if my parabola is going up and down? How do I pick my four numbers? Two on the right, two on the left, remember? There you go. All right, so two on the right is negative two and negative one. Two on the left is negative four and negative five. All right, put them in your calculator, graph it, then y'all start on number 15. All right, 15, we got to do the extra step. Leanna, what's my extra step on 15? I give up. Uh, can't give up. Negative three. We're going to divide by negative 3. All right, so we only divide the numbers, guys, that are in the group. So the minus 25, I just move it down out of the way. I don't have to divide it by negative 3. So I got x squared, 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6. Then put your box. All right, Leanna, what goes in the box? Plus 9. That's easy. Now, this is where y'all are messing up. The next step. Watch. If it's got a number in front, you've got to do something special. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. So we got to put positive 27 over here. That's where some of y'all are still messing up. All right. And the rest of it's pretty easy. That was the tough part that y'all forget. All right, so let's write your vertex. What's my vertex going to be? 3 and 2. Over 3, up 2. Good call. All right, now, Leanna, we got to pick four numbers. How do I pick them? Two on the left is 1 and 2. Two on the right is 4 and 5. All right, plug them in and graph it. Now, I want y'all to do 16 through 19. Matthew, follow along here with me. 21. 
I'll give you some time to finish those. All right, remember, now these on the back are different. Does it say they're different at the top? Does it say horizontal? Yeah. All right, these are horizontal, which now means the parabola is going to look like that. So we got to change a couple things when we graph. All right, so that's 21. Is that the one y'all were asking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so we do y squared plus 7y, then your box. Still doing them the same way, right? Move your plus 8 down. All right, Matthew, help me. How do we figure out what goes in the box? Half of 7 is 3.5. Square it, what do you get? I got plus 12.25 here. So I need a minus 12.25 there, right? Right, love? All right, so I got y plus 3.5 here squared. Add that up on your calculator. It's negative 4.25. So, so far, nothing's different. And this is where it gets different, right here. All right, here's how you know it's different. If you've got an x here, that means it's going to look like this. So, our vertex is really flipped around because... Now we've got y plus 3.5, so the negative 3.5 goes on my y over here, which means my x is negative 4.25, correct? That's the one thing you've got to change. You've got to flip it. So how do you follow me there? On these, this whole back page, 21 through 25, 20 through 25, you've got to flip your vertex. This is your y, it goes here, and your x goes there. All right, so let's graph that and see what it looks like. Negative 4.25 is about there, down one, two, three and a half. Put a dot for your vertex. All right, the other thing you got to change on the whole back page, all right? Y'all know how we've always picked two on the right, two on the left, right? Now you pick two above it and two below it. Because now the parabola is going like this. So what am I going to pick above it? Negative 3 and negative 2. And don't forget, you got to plug it in over here. Negative 3, negative 2. I was plugging them in on the wrong side for a whole day. It takes a while to get used to. And how about below it? Negative 4, negative 5. All right, that should do it, guys. Plug those in. Let's see what you get, and it should graph. Negative 4 down 3. Negative 2 down 2 makes a parabola. All right, so y'all should be good. Try 20. He's got the bottom right now. No, you just moved the plus 6.65.75 down. 